Grace. We're talking about Family Passion Part 3. Family Passion Part 3. And we're going to be in Matthew 23 for our offering. So I'll ask the ushers and the deacons to come forward and get ready for the Lord to bless uh, the offering. So let's do that. Matthew 23, 23. Before I get there, though, I'm going to ask you a question. It's rhetorical, and you may have heard it before, but I just want you to kind of drop this in your spirit. It says, Woe to you, scribes, Pharisees, hypocrites, for you tithe mint, dill, and cumin, and have neglected the weightier laws, uh, justice, mercy, and faithfulness. These you've ought to have done without neglecting the others. So when I ask you, what does woe mean? Some people would say, whoa, it's a horse, whoa, slow down. Or if you're backing up a truck to the dock, what do you say when he's getting, whoa! Or your wife comes home and she's got a new dress on, whoa! <laughs> Amen. <laughs> whoa means slow down, I acknowledge, a stop, something is going to happen. Whoa, slow down. Say that with me. Whoa. Whoa. Maybe somebody that is dating your daughter walks through the door. Whoa. Whoa, 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 whoa. Dave, whoa. We haven't talked yet. Whoa. That means slow your roll down. Slow your roll down, young man. <laughs> let's, listen to, let's listen to some of the woes that are in here before we get to it. Matthew 23. All right. Let's start in about, oh, let's start in about 13. Woe to you, scribes and Pharisees. So he says this over and over again. So woe, scribes and Pharisees. Uh, you hypocrites, Jesus doesn't like hypocrites. He actually says that. I wish that you would come to me hot or cold. But you come to me lukewarm, I spit you out my mouth. He don't want somebody that's walking both sides of the fence. See, because if somebody you know is, is, claims to be a Christian and they, they come to church, but they talk like this, it's a bad example for the kingdom. Now say, whoa. whoa. Mm -hmm. Verse 16, woe to you blind guides. If anyone swears by the temple, it is nothing. But if anyone swears by the gold of the temple, he is bound by the oath, you blind fools. For who is greater, the gold, of the, temp, uh, the gold or the temple that has made the gold sacred? And you say, if anyone swears by the altar, it is nothing. But if anyone swears by the gift that is on the altar, he is bound by his oath. You blind men, for which is greater, the gift or the altar that makes the gift sacred? So whoever swears by the altar swears by it, by everything on it. And whoever swears by the temple swears by it and by him who dwells in it. And whoever swears by, he, uh, by heaven swears by the throne of God and by him who sits upon it. So we'll leapfrog over 23. And if you go down to verse 25, he says, Woe to the scribes and Pharisees and calls them hypocrites again. And then down in 27, he calls them hypocrite, hypocrites again. In verse 29, he calls them hypocrites again. So these guys were big. Jesus said, you guys are big on tithing. Go back to 23. You scribes and Pharisees, you're good at tithing. He says, but what you forgot is the weightier matters of the law, justice, mercy, and faithfulness. Listen to what Jesus says. I don't know why people get this confused. I have this debate almost yearly with people talking about Jesus and or there's no mention of the tithe in the New Testament. Now, we are in the New Testament, and this is Jesus saying this, isn't it? 
Stay with me. He says, these you ought to have done without neglecting the others. So he says, do the justice, mercy, uh, and faithfulness. He goes, but don't forget about the tithe as well. Let's pray. Father God, we pray for the tithe. We pray that we're not only good at tithing, that we're good at justice and mercy and faithfulness as well. We ask, Lord God, that to open the eyes of those who are confused about the requirements from the Lord. And we ask, Lord God, that you would set them free. And we pray all this tonight in the name of Jesus. Amen. Uh, so let's applaud the Lord and let the offering be picked up. Hallelujah. <laughs> so in the book of Titus is where we're going to start our message. So I want to kind of go through and... I sent some notes up that said we're going to be in Titus verses one or chapter one verses one through eight. We'll pull out a couple of points, uh, and then we're going to go to two one eight, and then we're going to go to three one eight. And I don't think it's by any coincidence that God has it orchestrated this way. Um, so, talking about family passion part three, uh, the way we develop passion. Let me give this. A, this is ahead of my message. We're, we, we, we're going to live and grow in passion when we allow the Word of God to change our life. Now, follow me. The, a regenerated heart is healthy for the family. Amen. A regenerated heart is healthy for the family. Yes. Right. Amen. We, know, we know old, crusty, wore out, scarred, hurt, left behind, sorrowful, those kind of hearts aren't the kind of hearts that God uses for growth. God uses regenerated hearts, amen? We're regenerating our spirit today. It, we're, 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 giving it a, we're giving it a shot of steroids, amen? I remember this time almost every year, Pastor Bebo, actually in August, when the ride for Rocky would come around. Now, in its infancy, I still had some of my worldly friends that used to ride with me. And it would be kind of the time when we would get together and kind of leave the stoplight faster than one another. I was prepared for that ride because it was a, it was a battle not only of the motors, but it was a battle of the testosterone. Well, I, I stacked the deck in my favor like I always do, uh, Mrs. Ferguson. What I would do was go down to the airport, and I would get some jet fuel. <laughs> and I'd put it in the tank of my motorcycle and ask me, said, does it fly faster? No, say it like you want to hear the answer. <laughs> <laughs> Let me tell you what, that joker would flat run. Amen? I said amen. amen. Regenerated. That's what Paul sent Titus to Crete for. He said, boy, I want you to go out to the islands out there. I don't know, Crete, probably Cyprus and whatever else is out there. A lot of little islands. And I want you, here's what he says, Carol. He says, I want you to straighten out the work that never really got done. You ever sent somebody out there to do it like, oh, we're going to have you... Send your, send your guys out. We're going to do the pavers, and they forgot to dust it off or wash it off afterwards. You said, I'm going to go back and finish the work that you guys started. Just say hello if you know what I'm talking about. <laughs> Just We're going we're gonna to set the landscape block, and we're going to backfill it with rock. We're going to finish the job. That's what this is. They're finishing the job, uh, regenerating, so a point some people to get this done. So if you want these things done, you appoint the people that can be or have the propensity to be experts in this area. So here it is. Paul, what does he say? A what? A what? Third word, Third word in there. He describes himself as Paul, and then he says, a what? Servant. If you want to be first in his kingdom, you have to be a servant in his kingdom. He's addressing uh, this brother uh, and describing what he is in the kingdom of God, a servant. And that's something that is so 
uh, speaks volumes to people outside the kingdom of God. And they could go like, you know, like right now they could go, hey, you know what? We don't even like Christianity. We don't even like church. But man, I'll tell you what, those guys are servants. It's like the ride for Rocky. Watch this. So we have been there here on the ride for Rocky. We've already been there and done this. We're in our 20th year. Not second, but 20th. Well, I have all different bars we've been to all over St. Louis, St. Charles. Been there, done it, got the T-shirts. They may not like Christianity, but they say, you know what? They're consistent about their faith. We're consistent about this faith. Watch this for a second. When you got, let me tell you something. When you got this on your back, Jack, you better be able to back it all up. Amen. You better be able to back all that up. Are you wearing a road ride or a uh, patch for Jesus, travelers for Jesus? You better be able to back it all up, not just with speech, but also your behavior as well. Amen. Amen. You better say that's right. They, they're not. They're not. You just heard all the woes, and, they, and then he said hypocrites. We don't need. We don't want to be labeled as hypocrites. We want to be labeled as hypocrites. We are what we are. Whether you like us or not, we're honest about it. We're, we're Christians. And God's people said amen. amen. And here's the deal. Terry, you don't even have to apologize for it. We ain't apologizing. We're grown adults. We ain't going to apologize for being a Christian. Matter of fact, it's the greatest thing you guys have ever done. Because you never would have been sitting here on a Saturday night. I can tell you that right now. You guys would probably, Some of you guys would be at the saloon right now. Just say hello and I'll move on. <laughs> Amen. Well, an apostle of Jesus Christ for the sake of the faith of God's elect, their knowledge of truth, which accords with the godliness in hope of eternal life, which God, who never lies, promised before the ages began. So this is a long introduction, but there's a purpose to it. And at the proper time manifested his word through the preaching with which I have been entrusted by the command of God, our Savior, to Titus, my true child in a common faith, grace and peace from God the Father, Christ Jesus, our Savior. This is why I left you in Crete. I kind of gave that away already, but I want you to listen. So that you might put what remained into order and appoint elders in every town as I directed you. And then we'll just read two verses coming up here. It says, if anyone is above reproach, which means disgrace, the husband but of one wife, and his children are believers and not open to the charge of debauchery or insubordination, for an overseer as God's steward must be above reproach. He must not be arrogant or quick-tempered or drunkard or violent, or greedy for gain. So listen, here's the deal. Election time is coming up. Amen. Election time is coming up. Everyone has a certain person that they're going to vote for, whether it's in local government or the federal level. You get an opportunity, Lori, in America to put the person you want in office. I'm going to tell you personally for Pastor Pat. I won't put somebody in office that doesn't follow the biblical mandate handed down through Jesus Christ and the power of the Lord. I won't do it. I won't do it. I'm held to it. I'm held to it. Here's the deal. A lot, a lot of times people are confused. I don't, a lot of times people are confused. They go, well, I don't really know how to vote. Here's, here's what I've been saying since I became a preacher 20 years ago. If you don't know how to vote, read your Bible and God will tell you. And the church said amen. amen. That's all I'm saying. He's saying if you want somebody to go in there and correct things, they have to have this kind of a standard. You're not going to vote somebody in that can't get the job done. You're not going to ask somebody to help you in your company if they don't have a great track record. You're going to vote somebody in that follows and adheres to the biblical principles. Amen. amen. Just saying, chapter 2, 1 through 8. Listen to this. But as for you... I'm in, I'm in chapter 2, 1, 8. But as for you, teach what accords with sound doctrine. Older men are to be sober-minded, dignified, self-controlled, sound in faith, in love, 
and in steadfastness, older women likewise to be reverent in behavior, not slanderers or slaves to much wine. They are to teach what is good. Now, let, let, me, let me go backwards for just a second. Put your finger on right there. Uh, they are to teach what is good. I want, I want to take you back here to something that I didn't get to preach on. And, and it's in verse 717. So after he says, he must not be drunkard or violent or greedy for gain, but hospitable, verse, verse 8, 1, 8, but hospitable, a lover, say this with me, a lover of good. A lover of good. That's what I got highlighted here. And, and he said, self-control, upright, and what does it say? And disciplined. So he needs to be a lover of good and disciplined. And then when we go over here, it says that the, that the ladies should be teaching younger women what is good. Say that with me. What is good? That's what we're supposed to be teaching. What is good? The, the, the men are to teach it and be disciplined. And the ladies are to teach it what is good. Here's, here's the thing. There's no confusion on what is good and what is bad. We know that we have an inherent knowledge of things that are good and things that are bad. We know that. Don't let the enemy come in and blur the lines on what is good and what is not good. Amen. Seniors, talk back to me for just a second. You know what should be taught in your families, in the schools, and, and, and just out in public. Ladies, senior ladies, you know some of the young ladies should not be walking around dressed the way they dress. Somebody give me an amen. amen. You just hold on, sister. You don't need to, you need to dress like that. Say it with me. If it ain't on the menu, cover it up. And you don't want your son dating it either. Can I keep preaching at this church? I'm just reading what's in the book. He said, teach what is good. I got it highlighted so I don't forget it. We, I have these conversations with my daughter every single day. And she lives in Tennessee. Love what is good. So she won't be, so she won't have a distorted view when she's down in Tennessee, what is good and what is bad. Just ask yourself, what would Jesus do and what would daddy accept? Say it again. What would Jesus do and what would daddy accept? It's, it almost seems like it's, I'm, I'm an oddball, isn't it, when I'm preaching like this? You go, oh man, that dude's way, he's way off the, we just kind of let everybody do whatever they want nowadays. That's the problem we're having. Everybody's doing whatever they want instead of what they're supposed to be taught. Don't come, here's the deal. I would rather teach a, a young person about Jesus than try to fix an adult. Somebody help me out now. Go ahead, it's applaud worthy. <laughs> Do you ever feel like going up to a man and go, you're a grown man? Say it with me, you're a grown man. This is helping me. I don't know if it's doing anything for you, Pastor B. Well, I know you know all this stuff. <laughs> Let's do it. Okay, the, I'm going to go back to three, and then we'll get going. I'm sorry. Uh, older women, likewise, to be reverent behavior, not slanders or slaves to much wine. They, they are to teach what is good, and so train the young women to love their husbands and children. Is there something wrong with that? Just love, you know? Amen. And then watch this, uh, Pat. It says to be self-controlled, pure, working at home, kind, submissive to their own husbands, uh, that the word of God may not be rivaled. Uh, and it doesn't mean your wife's a second-class citizen. And it doesn't mean she's not your equal. And it doesn't mean she's sub anything. Verse 6, likewise urge the younger men to be self-controlled. Show yourself in all respects and be what does it say? Be a model of good works, and in your teaching, show integrity, dignity, and sound speech that cannot be condemned so that any opponent may be put to shame, having nothing evil to say about us. So let's go back to this. So if they, if they don't like Christians at all, do you ever see that? For You want to say something, Mrs. Leonard, we don't do this, but other people do. 
You want to say something bad about him, but then when you scroll it through your mind, you go like, you know what? That dude don't do anything bad. Or that girl don't do anything bad. Wouldn't you like that said over your life? And I, and I have friends that are like that. I have some friends that, that follow the Lord, and whether you, whether you like them or you like what they drive or whatever, you go, you know what, man, I can't speak ill of him or her because they're always so nice to everybody. I think that's great quality, being nice to people, isn't it? I wonder what would happen if everyone was nice to one another. And, and then we'll read eight verses here in chapter three, and then we'll be done. So, so here's, here's how I develop passion and, and, and get my heart regenerated. So here it is. And it's subtitled, Be Ready for Every Good Work. Verse three, remind them to be submissive to rulers and authorities and to be obedient, to be ready for every good work. To speak evil, what did I just say? To speak evil of who? No one. Oh, hold on for a second, man. I tell you, you know what? Oh, man. I don't really want to say this, but I feel like I need to. You ever get in a prayer, prayer circle like that? They go, you know what? I'm not gossiping, but. <laughs> I mean, at other churches, I hear they do this. And Janet, here's the deal. I'm not gossiping at all, but like. You probably ought to know this. <laughs> we want that, don't we? I mean, it's like the National Enquirer at church. <laughs> Our flesh wants to say something, man, because the slightest pump-up of ego is almost worth it till after you throw it out. And then you go, man, why did I do that? That person ain't that bad. Don't you believe that God wants us to find the good in everybody? I mean, look, sometimes in your own family, you got to look hard, but there's good in them. And God wants you to say it with me, drill down on that. Drill down on that. And sometimes you got to drill pretty far before you... Before you find the good, but that's where you need to hang your hat. Tell your neighbor to wake up. Listen to this. Verse 3, 3-3 three, three says, for ourselves, we were once foolish. Close your eyes and listen to this, and it will be like your mom talking to you. But we ourselves were once foolish, disobedient, led astray, slave to various passions. Park it there for just a second. What were you passionate about all your life before you came to Jesus? What were you passionate about? The boys, the girls, the bikes, the cars, the houses, the money. Oh, we're, go we're going to the top of the ladder, Terry. Top of the ladder. Okay, all right, you guys all stand up to get this one. And I'll walk over anybody I got to get there. Right, Dave? Right, be in business. Here, watch me. Carol, I'll ask you to... <laughs> Oh, here's you. I'm going to show everybody, too. I'm going to show everybody. Show everybody. Show everybody how cool I am. Show everybody. Here's what I want to know. What kind of show are you putting on and who are you putting it on for? All self. I want everybody to know. I'm going to make a spectacle out of him. Now, I believe that we ought to run up the score on the devil. Don't get me wrong. And I'm happy doing it. But I don't believe that we ought to try to show other people up when they're, when they're trying to come up too. And, and if you leave a place or leave a business or leave a church or whatever, we don't need to show anybody anything. Nobody's impressed by your, your show. Well, I'll tell you, I'll just show them. Oh, show, them in the, show them in the traffic. We, we show them, show them, show them. Woo, show them. Don't be disobedient, he said. We are passions and pleasures, passing our days. What's the, I can't believe he's reading my mail. Passing our days in malice and envy, hated by others and hating one another. Hating, we're going to hate them. I hate them. I hate this place. I hate it. We hate it. Christians are saying it. We hate it. 
Ah, I hate spaghetti. I hate tomatoes. Hate onions. We're, we're, they're, 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 watch this. They're conditioning us to use the word. And it, how can you hate a food? Adults, talk to me for a second. I get it when you're a kid, you don't want to eat your spinach. I hate it. Oh, I hate fruitcake, i tell you that. We're going to make a, we're going to make the enemy happy. Because the pastor starting to use the word hate. Here's the deal, I only hate what God hates. I don't use the word at my house, it's not permitted. We don't use the word hate at my house, don't use it. That's about as dirty a word as it gets. Because if, if you can start to say it, you'll start to get involved in it. I hate the lighting in here. <laughs> hate the stage too, by the way. I don't like the color. Hate the carpet. I wonder what Rankin's going to do. I hate the way he walks around like that. <laughs> hey, it's swag. It ain't, it's a swag when you. you. <laughs> if he gives another altar call, I'd love to serve, but I hate the altar calls. Just can't stand it. He's always trying to lead people to Jesus. <laughs> Guilty as charged. Guilty as charged. You know what I love about this church? Is every one of you guys in it. You guys make it up. It's a, it's a great place. I, I, I'm, I'm pumped. I'm stoked. When at my, I'm at my farm and I'm, I'm getting ready to leave, I'm, my dad knows when I got to go. He's like, you know, hey. And I'm, whew, I want to get here, man. I want, I, want, I want to be here with you. Love the drive. Love to be here. You see how, how we can change the complexion of our story just by changing the words in it? You get to drive. You get to be here. You get to sit here. You get to enjoy. You get to be part of it. You get to praise God. You get to praise the King of kings and the Lord of lords. You get to tell people how you love Jesus. You get to come to church. You get to live in America. You get to do all these wonderful things. By the grace of God, I say today, amen. By the grace of God. How can you have hate in your heart when you got Jesus? I, this is, hey, listen to me. This is the coolest time of the whole year. The trees are turning colors. God is painting a, a picture for you and me, Mrs. Ferguson. It's nice outside. Let's find the good and let's eat the meat and spit out the bones. So we're building our passion. Listen to how this goes. Verse 5. He saved us not because of the works done by us in righteousness, but according to his own mercy. What does it say? By the washing of what? Regeneration and renewal of the Holy Spirit. So we'll end in Galatians chapter 5. And I want you to close your eyes and listen to this. This is a call out for all the brothers and sisters who didn't think they had a shot at being born again. Six verses, for freedom Christ has set us free. Stand firm, therefore, and do not submit again to a yoke of slavery. There's a difference between freedom and there's a difference from, from being yoked with uh, slavery. He's talking about sin here. Look, I, Paul, say to you, if you accept circumcision, Christ will be no advantage. What he's talking about is works. I testify again to every man, whoever accepts circumcision, that he is obligated to keep the whole law. You are severed from Christ, you who have been justified by the law. You have fallen away from grace. For through the Spirit, by faith, we ourselves eagerly wait for the hope of the righteousness. Last verse. For in Christ Jesus... Neither circumcision nor uncircumcision counts for anything, but only what? Faith, working through love. So let me end with this. Like I tell you, week in and week out, it's only faith working through love. 
and I was and when I was going through this, I had them I had them in two columns: faith, being sure of what we hope for, evidence of things not seen; love. Love is patient, love is kind, it's not envious or boastful, it's not haughty or proud or rude. It's not selfish, rude, haughty. Faith, love. In order to get the faith to move, you have to have love in your heart. And, and according to Hebrews eleven six, 6, without faith it's impossible to please God. Can you imagine running all through here and bro, going to all the rallies you want to go to? And going all the places and doing ministry work all over the place and trying to please God, he says, you can't please me unless you have faith. Hebrews eleven six. 6, check it out. Man, I would be very discouraging. I love to please my heavenly father. Wouldn't you like to get to heaven one day? And he says, well done, my good and faithful. All right, let's pray about that. Passion, family passion, part three. I get on fire for the Lord. My family gets on fire for the Lord. My church gets on fire for the Lord. And then our community gets on fire for the Lord. And then we can go out and do ministry work and go to rallies and, and encourage one another. And they'll ask you, I've seen all the pictures. People sent me a lot of pictures today. There were a lot of places. They go, we got to pray for so-and-so. We got to pray for so-and-so. You'd never be able to pray for somebody in these high positions if you wasn't a Christian. People sent me that. He said, do you realize, Mrs. Ferguson, that we're praying for the governor of Missouri? Somebody ought to give me an amen in this house today. We're praying for him in person. You're making a difference. Hey, we're not just talking about it anymore. We got the receipt right here in the Bible. We're difference makers. I love seeing that where these guys are out there sharing the love of Jesus. Here's the deal. We love people no matter what side of the fence or community. We love everybody. We love everybody. Christians love everybody. Can I say that again? Christians love everybody. Christians love everybody. Don't get all stuck on anything. Don't get all worked up on, on all that. God's called us to love everybody. Do you have love in your heart today? Do you have love in your heart? Wouldn't you like to have your faith, your faith generator working over time? Faith. Faith can move mountains. But what you have to do is have a regenerated heart full of love. So that's the prayer today. How would you like to be filled back up with the love of Jesus? If that's you, say, I need my heart to be filled up with love. Just raise your hand and I'll pray for you right where you're at. Don't even have to move. Just, just leave it there for a second. We're going to get a fill up here, Big Steve. Watch this. Love is patient and kind. It does not envy or boast. It is not arrogant or rude. It does not insist on its own way. It is not irritable or resentful. It does not rejoice at wrongdoing, but rejoices with the truth. Love bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things. What? Love never ends. Let's pray that prayer right now. Father God, I pray in the name of Jesus that you fill up these hearts that are, that are cracked and leaky. Fill them up full of your love so they can share the love of Jesus to a lost and dying world. And all the people on either side of the aisle, no matter where they come from, what they look like, what city, what state, what country, what part of the world, we claim victory over the enemy in the name of Jesus tonight. And we give you the glory that we have won the fight. We have finished the race. And we give you the glory tonight that we're victorious. And we pray all this in thy name of Jesus. And all God's people said amen.